I'm Jasmine Franks and you are watching Live in the Hive. Oh, of course you're watching Live in the Hive. Where else would you be? It's Sunday, it's eight o'clock and I am Michelle Eagleton. I'm with you for the next half an hour with our online magazine show, dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. So thank you for joining me this evening. You might be joining me on the Live in the Hive Facebook page. Hello there. Or you might be on the Isle of Manchester Facebook page, the iconic city brand dedicated to community and culture. Well, whichever platform you are watching on, you are in for an absolutely fantastic show. Now you might have seen there the wonderful Jasmine Frank. She is one of our guests tonight. She is the star of Hollyoaks. You might remember her as Esther Bloom. She played that character for a number of years. She's going to be joining me a little bit later on and if you're a musical theatre lover, well we have got musical royalty in the hive in the shape of of the lovely Leia Salonga. Two wonderful women joining us, but hey, we can also do better than that. We can do three wonderful women because these ladies are gonna be playing us out of the show a little bit later on. They are the stars of The Share Show, which is coming to Manchester's Opera House from the 17th to the 21st of May very very exciting times and of course talking of exciting times i got to meet one of my all-time icons in the musical theatre world earlier this week. You saw her just a moment ago, Leia Salonga. They say you never should meet your icons, but I have to say she really did not disappoint. The lady that originated the role of Kim in Miss Saigon, she's been not one but two Disney princesses, Princess Jasmine, Tick, Mulan, tick and if you know that isn't enough she's currently starring in the hbo series pretty little liars she's amazing she took the time out to chat to me about her uk tour which excitingly is coming to manchester's bridgewater hall and one of the first things i had to ask her was when you starred in so many fantastic musical productions like les mis Miss Saigon, how do you choose your set list? Where do you start? And this is what she had to say. Well, for a show like this, when I get to tour and concert, I have a little bit more freedom. I'm not limited to singing just the songs that I did when I did, say, shows like Miss Saigon or Les Miserables or any of the shows that I've done. I can pull from different musical genres. I can pull from pop as well as musical theater and film music and jazz and and then just, you know, have myself a good time on stage and hopefully the audience has a good a time as I am as they watch the show. So, I mean, I have I've done this before where I would sing something from Miss Saigon but it wouldn't be any of my stuff it would be another song sung by a different character. And that's always fun because then I get the chance to, you know, see how it would sit in my voice and in my range and, and then kind of figure out an interpretation that's right for me. So it, it becomes, a, it becomes a whole different thing. And when I do tour, I feel like I have, um, I have the freedom to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, you talked about kind of the songs that we know you for. Right. And this particular tour, I mean, it's a 30th anniversary this year, which makes Imagine. Me can you imagine? That is crazy. It's 30th 30 anniversary years. of, of yeah. a whole new world being released where you yeah. were the voice of Princess Jasmine. Yeah. And it's, it was, it's kind of nuts, but... It, that song, actually the film, everything about it had such staying power that it's become such a classic and that there are generations of young people that sing the song, know the song, have heard the song, watch the movie, play that soundtrack. And it's 30 years old, but holds up really well. I was just talking to my daughter and my daughter's 11 and okay. you know, she loves musical theater. She grew up, she was born to the Glee soundtrack. Oh my like, gosh. 
I okay. know, I know. So, you know, she's destined for musical theatre. But I said to her, oh, you know, I'm interviewing Leia Salonga and she's been two Disney princesses. And I told her and she was like, that is the coolest. I mean, what was it like for your little girl? when she was first introduced <laughs> to that and like mommy's a princess come on i don't think she thinks of it as anything particularly special i guess because she grew up my daughter and so for her it's not anything novel um i don't think it's anything that she considers maybe maybe when she gets much much older then she'll realize you know what the impact of this kind of work is but at the moment it's 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 her mom it's just her mommy doing doing you know voice work and singing for films and it's just something i think she she just grew up around so much so i mean it, it it's going to be special to another little girl somewhere else but for her it's yeah that's what mom does and that's it <laughs> Well, my kids, Leia, think you are amazing because Thank not you. only was my little girl impressed, I said to my seven-year-old boy, I was like, do you know what she does in her spare time to kind of relax when she's not doing her musical theatre numbers? She plays video games. He was like, no, no. I was yeah. like, yeah, big fan of Super Mario. I mean, where did this come from, Leia? You know? I don't know. I think I always just had an affinity for it. Um, I mean, I do remember playing Pong as a child. And I think a lot of adults my age or around my age will remember what that was. That was the, you know, the basically the two the two white sticks yeah. and you, you know, the, the the little ball bouncing in between them it was basically a very a slow and then gets progressively faster sort of tennis match. I mean, I remember playing Super Mario after yeah you know, performances of Miss Saigon and it would help me relax. It, it provided escape after, you know, tackling a heavy subject matter and, and a mammoth show like that. It was just a great way for me to zone out. And then I would feel zoned out enough that I could go to sleep. Um, now the games are, I, it's, it still helps me to zone out. And now it's Assassin's Creed. It's, there's a game called Hades, it's Death's Door, it's these, you know, and Ori and the Will of the Wisp, and it's that kind of stuff. I like the platformers. Those are the things that I like. So I'm yeah. expecting you to bring some video games over to the UK, but you're also bringing something <laughs> far more precious. You're bringing yeah. your brother, Gerard. I'm bringing my brother, yeah. Gerard is oh. coming with me, and he'll be my musical director for the duration of the tour. And it'll be his first time touring in the UK. I mean, he has friends who, he has friends on Facebook, which actually said, okay, so you're actually coming this time? It's really happening? And he said, oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna be there. Um, it makes me happy that a member of my family is gonna be on the tour with me. Um, I mean, my daughter's already gonna be coming. So it's it makes me happy that a member of my family will be on stage with me and, and he's gonna, kind of watch my back and make sure that I'm okay. And yeah, I think we're just going to have a really, really good time. And we get to perform at the Royal Albert Hall together. Epic. That's wow. an epic venue in London. And we're really, really ex excited about it. Wait until she gets to the Bridgewater Hall in Manchester. That is going to be one hell of a night. That's the 24th of June that she's coming to our neck of the woods. And it's going to be magical. You heard there, she's going to be on stage with her brother, Gerard. And she's going to be playing some of the most amazing songs. Her voice is incredible. And how humble is she? She's absolutely lovely and truly amazing and if you're a fan of Leia Salonga there is more from her coming up in the second part of my interview with her she tells me all about what it was like to rejoin the cast of Miss Saigon 25 years on and she'll also be revealing how an allergy nearly prevented her from her first big 
break. I kid you not, that would have been a crime, wouldn't it? And of course, later on in the show, we are joined by these ladies. They are the stars of the share show and they are going to be playing us out of tonight's show. But hey, let's get to our next guest. She joined me in the hive. I'm talking about Jasmine Franks, who played Esther Bloom in Hollyoak. She actually came in to my hive to have a brew and tell me all about her love for theatre and her first foray into the world of theatre too. But of course, I had to start off by asking her, what was it like to be in Hollyoaks the Soap for so long? And what it was like to be part of that Hollyoaks family? I've met friends for life there. I think you are, it's, it's a madhouse. Yeah. It's absolutely mental. That. Yeah. Um, but so much fun. Like you're doing something different every single day. Mm -hmm. Like you're doing a different scene, you're working with different people. And yeah, the people there are great. The crew, I love the crew. I miss the crew like mad. Oh. Yeah, I really miss the crew. Um, but yeah, just it's top. It's a top environment. It was so much fun. Well, last time that I saw you, we were at the theatre going to see uh everyone's talking about Jamie. Oh. And you were actually with one of your fellow Hollyoak cast members. And it was like a reunion, wasn't it? You oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, Nick, I saw Nick. Yeah, that's the thing. And like, you don't see anyone for so long. And We're saying Nick as if you know who Nick is. <laughs> Sorry, Nick Pickard. Oh. <laughs> Tony played. Hutchinson. Tony, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we. that's the thing. You bump into people uh at, at events like that at the theater and especially when i've been out of it for so long because I've, I've not been i left in 2018 so and really the only thing i go to now is the press nights at yeah. the theater i think that's that's so that's where i do bump into people and it, it is nice to check in and nothing ever changes everyone's still the same oh it's always <laughs> the, yeah always the same there always the same crowd yep. and just yep. put a, a really nice vibe and this led you know your love of theatre and and the opportunity now that you've been out of Hollyoaks to actually being on stage yourself yeah. <laughs> first time i cannot believe this yeah. it was last year yeah. in panto wasn't it i yeah. mean middleton arena this is when you go oh no it isn't oh sorry oh, it wasn't oh, but everyone does that i never get the joke everyone's always like oh no it isn't and i'm like oh panto yeah sorry it's because we're all really cheesy <laughs> so, take us back to that then so getting your first role and on stage that must be quite scary because, it, you know, in front of the, a camera, you've just kind of got the crew behind it. But yeah. Now you've got like a big audience. Yeah, for me, it was that, like, when you're on screen, you can go again. If you mess up, you're like, oh, sorry, can we just pick that up? Can we start again? You've got a roll with it. And I'm terrible at improvisation, like, shockingly bad. Yeah, well, I, I didn't like it when I was an actress. I always got asked to be a tree. <laughs> I wish I would, like that. Take that'll be a tree. Let me just stand in the back and be a tree. But uh, yeah, no, terrible at it. And when you're with theatre people that do it day in day out, they're dead good at ad libbing, picking something up if something goes wrong, making something up to do it. And with panto, I imagine that's something that you got well, to do all the, the time. Thing. Cause... When you've got a dame there and the comic there, and I always used to say to him, I'd be backstage and I'd be like, like let me do my lines in the order my lines have been learned in. Don't start throwing things at me because I will literally just be like a rabbit in headlights. Like, oh no, what's my line? You've not given me my feed. Like, I'm so like structured with how I've learned this. My line comes after your line. Yeah, but I bet that's like a red rag to a bull for a dame. And the yeah. dame's like, I'm gonna do her. <laughs> but that's what I mean. It gets to some point if it we we're in a scene and, and it kind of you could see it going, and I'd be like stood there going, oh no no. No, 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 no. And like the anxiety of it and kick in and I'd be like, I'm just going to get my line in, my correct line. Da -da -da, just say my words and yeah. And being the mermaid, did you have a little bit of that comedy or was it kind of playing it straight then? No, so I went in thinking I was going to have to be this like magical mermaid and be all girly and, and I'm not girly at all. So I was like, the outfit was mega. But uh, I saw the outfit, yeah, it was absolutely it was, gorgeous. It was like, yeah. outfit. But um, we went, first day of rehearsals, he and our director, he was just like, just make a mank. I went, what? He went, have a mank. Let's camper up a bit, make a mank, throw in a few of your dirty looks that you like to do in your straight face and stuff. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, why not? Make it funny. And so we did, and it 
we loved it and so many people were the saying the mank mermaid Mimi the mank mermaid love it and so many people were saying afterwards like oh do you know what it was really nice to watch like the the princess style the the, the that female character in yeah. the panto not be all ditzy and girly and airy fairy we've been there and done yeah. that and it is kind of that cliche so to mank it up yeah i loved it i was like oh wicked i can do that did you go yeah <laughs> but it made it like straight away though like your confidence was back because i like, i went into that first day of rehearsal i had to sing i had a blooming solo but you can't sing i had a so well i went in <laughs> you I, said it you i said had it to wrong. sing i had to sing so we went in i go in all airy fairy and i'm like oh hello boys and girls and giving it all that and then this song come and it's so high what was it I don't, it was one that they, they'd written for. Oh, an original yeah, one. Yeah, an original one. So they sent me the, uh, like. The instrumental. Yeah, and like someone else singing it. Yeah. So all summer I've been like this. Um, I spent my wages on singing lessons because I was like, I need, I need to be able to sing this high. It was the highest note in the whole show. Oh, God. So I get into the first day of rehearsals and they were like, just act it. I was like, what? They were like, just act the song, don't sing it. Let's just act it. Love it. And I was like, oh, wicked. And straight away, your confidence soars because I was so panicked about it. I was petrified. I had to open the show. So this pyro goes off, this firework, which petrifies me anyway every time I'm inside of the stage. I can't even step back from it because I've got this fishtail on. So I'm having to be close to it. My eyes are shut. I'm like this at the side of stage. And as soon as it goes, I'm like, Move shuffling out and then it's your song is it no i, have, I just have to like i like um hello boys and give it all that yeah yeah just. is it rhyming yeah they always do that in panto they do and the worst thing is like that i it was easy to learn because it's like a song yeah for some reason so like it, i found it easier to learn but the moment you start to slip a line i'm like what rhymes with that <laughs> and <laughs> honestly <laughs> Why oh and choose your words wisely <laughs> yeah. as well because it is a pantomime yeah oh. yeah stressful live theater is stressful loved every second of it though so you can do it again yeah yeah 100 oh fantastic yeah because honestly i think the buzz that live theater must bring as yeah. an actress and then seeing that instant well, kind of you yeah. know reaction yeah like that yeah it's <laughs> well, yeah, ridiculous but yeah that's how how you feel with it so what kind of role are you looking for now on theatre? If somebody could say to you, do you know what, Charles? Uh, I want you to start in such and such. And you'd be like, oh my God. So do you know what? I've, I've, like I said before, you watch musicals. I sit in the audience and I'm in awe of them. Uh, I went to watch um, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe at the Lowry. Oh, how amazing was that? Well, I was like, these people are dancing around a stage dressed as beavers, playing an instrument and acting. Yeah. What? I know, it's totally my field. I it? was like this at them. It was <laughs> insane. Um so I'm always in awe of them, so I could never I don't think I could ever do it. But I watched Hairspray the other night, the, the film. We Love yeah. Hairspray. And like Dan was laughing his head off because he was like, You dance like Tracy Turnblad. He was like, That is you on a night out. I'm like, oh my god, it is. So now I want to be Tracy, <gasps> Tracy Turnblad. Turnblad. Oh well, do you know what? You'd have to put on a bloody fat suit. I mean, come on, there's no oh, of you, Jazz. I'm in my element. Oh. Yeah, but we watched it the other night and we were howling. Roll. Yeah. Absolutely cracking roll. And again, I think the songs are very active Actually, that Tracy yeah. has. Yeah. And I can't remember any really high notes when I've seen that musical. So no. there you go. We've put it out there now. Put it out there. Put it out to the universe. Oh, that is. <laughs> I'd love to see you in that. That would be amazing. All yeah. oh, right, okay. That's it. We're well, talking about musicals then what is your favorite all-time musical because you must have one i do have one i think my all-time i mean i can't tell you how many times i've seen it um, every time it comes to the palace or the opera house i'm there is billy elliott hands down the most incredible thing i've ever seen on stage yeah do you know what i actually prefer the stage musical than the film oh yeah 100 really really 100%. do yeah. and you know sometimes you know the thing that comes first you yeah. go oh I, I i like that and it's never yeah. lived up to it but for me the stage is, is yeah so amazing. no i do i think and it, i think because it's so hard hitting as well and it, it's got i just think it's incredible and i've never not watched it and been like 
blown away. Oh, and do you cry? Cry my eyes the, out. Yeah, yeah. The, the song, the song. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Always, I'm a, I'm a state. But then I've seen you, everyone's talking about Jamie up there, and I was like, loved every second of it. I know. Well, you know, Leighton, don't yeah, you? Yeah, Leighton yeah, yeah. Because he was Jamie in the at Carol's as well, yeah. So, yeah. And what's that like, seeing somebody I mean, that he's you've known for years insane. up on the stage? He's insane. Like, he, like, so talented. He's in LA at the moment. Yeah, he's like, in LA. I know, I know, that is such I know. a good gig to have. I know. I know. And that's the thing you see these people tour. Like, Georgie toured with Fame. And she was all over the show. Oh. And, like, Faye's in Chicago and Dubai I, at the moment. And I'm like... I'm going to stop oh. you, though, with Georgie. Because when she was in Fame, I went to interview her. Oh, no, what? In a headband, right? And leg warmers and the full get up. She looked at me and then I started saying to her, I went, take a look at me. Tell me what you see, Georgie. And I started to recite in the whole Fame. And she was like... What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that is so Georgie as well. She, she was just like, like absolutely <laughs> lovely. But like when you get in hairspray, Broadway, come on, put your rock on. That's it, you know. Yeah. Oh, we had such a great time in the hive that afternoon. Me and Jasmine Franks there. We had a right old natter about theatre. And hey, you never know. She might be the next Tracy Turnblad in Hairspray the Musical. You heard it here first. And if there's any casting directors out there watching, you know where she is. She only needs a couple of singing lessons and she'll be right as rain. <laughs> Now, coming up, we have got the second part of my interview with Leia Salonga. And also, playing us out of the show tonight, we have got a snippet from The Share Show, which is coming to Manchester in May at the Opera House. And if you want to find out what is happening across Greater Manchester, you know where to go. The I Love Manchester website, I Love Manchester. Dot com. It's going to tell you where to eat, where to go to be entertained, where to get the best culture, and it tells you about community in our great city. And of course, not only check that out this week, but check us out on socials. If you don't already, then give us a follow on our Instagram and Twitter. It's at Live in the Hive 21. But now to the second part of the interview I did with Leia Salonga. And I took her back to the early days of her career when she auditioned for the role of Annie. And well, it didn't go to plan. I don't know what happened, but I had I was experiencing a major allergy attack. Mm -hmm. I remember my eyes being swollen. Thankfully, I don't think it was anaphylaxis, but I think I definitely I must have eaten something to cause that allergy. So, but my mom still took me to the audition because they weren't going to move it for one person. I mean, that's crazy. So I went and I still sang and I got a standing ovation after I sang, probably because people felt sorry for me that. Here I was at this audition with this allergy attack and I still, you know, I still put in the effort. Um, so that might have that might have been the case. But in any case, I, I got the part and it it led to a whole lot of other things. Absolutely. And, you know, it led ultimately to that that Kim role, which I imagine was life changing. Do you it was. It definitely look was. back at, at that moment and think, God, you know, that 17 year old, if she could have known what was ahead, you mm -hmm. know, I didn't think at the time that I auditioned. And even when we opened the show, I didn't think that, you know, I would be sitting here talking to you about a UK tour in 2022. It just it didn't it didn't occur to me that that would be the trajectory my my life and my career would take and you know being that young you don't you you're not always able to see what lies ahead um but boy boy it's what a what an incredible journey this has been truly oh. um yeah. It gets me every time, every time that I see Miss Saigon and, and particularly the special moment on the 25th anniversary where you surprised people and came on the stage at the end. It was like, oh, I got goosebumps, you know, it was <laughs> an absolute yeah, moment. Yeah, that was very special. And it was really wonderful to be able to um, celebrate you know, 25 years of that show. And, you know, with a brand new cast and company who was performing this eight times a week, um, it was 
it was very, it was very, very special. And it was great to see Jonathan Price again. And it was great to reconnect with Simon Bowman and be able to sing, to sing with him. I mean, it had been a while since we had done anything like that. Um, but by the end of that night, my, my, my feet were dead because <laughs> I was in heels for much of the evening, but it was, it was just such a, it was just such a fantastic night. Oh, um, I can imagine. Yeah. Well, I mean, you must have had so many fantastic nights. Is it is it hard to pick one? Because you know, you've performed for presidents, you've performed for the Queen, you performed for the you know Princess of Wales. Is there a right. is there a moment that you kind of hold dear that you just go, that for me was the the best, the best. Oh my, I don't know. Um, I don't know that there is a night that I can point to um, in my career that I can say, oh my gosh, that was the most amazing. I don't, I don't think that there is one night because I mean, you know, there were the opening nights for both productions of Miss Saigon. There was, um, you know, the after party celebrations after the awards shows, or, you know, there's performing at the Tony Awards um, or presenting at the Tony Awards after COVID happened. I mean, yeah. you know, being able to walk into a theater again and feel this, this, and, and feel very emotional. You know what, there's still time to come though, Leia, because, you know, I think one of the moments in the future might be, collaborating with one of your favorite bands bts <laughs> oh my gosh i i discovered them i mean i had known a little bit about them even before the pandemic began but i really went into that deep dive into that rabbit hole yeah i'm i'm happily still in there i took the deep dive in august of 2020 when dynamite came out and you know at first it's I want to know their names and and then later on you're able to identify them even with their backs turned you, you just know from shoulder width hair even not even the haircut because those haircuts and hair colors change like every month so you really you are know, a super fan aren't you i am a super fan and i have a bunch of friends who are themselves probably even bigger fans than I am. And we talk about them, we celebrate who they are. And as an Asian performer, it makes me feel so proud that here is a boy band from Asia that's just killing it. And, oh. and just, you know, showing off, you know, Asian masculinity and talent and charm and stage presence and a high degree of performance and, and, you know, being wonderful. And there has been nothing like this ever. I mean, we've seen boy bands come and go. I mean, One Direction and In Sync and the Backstreet Boys and New Edition and New Kids on the Block. Um, there have been boy bands since, I guess, I don't know. I mean, the Jackson Five, the Temptations, the Four Tops, the Beatles, yeah. the Beatles and, and, but there, but this is the first time that a boy band from my part of the world is doing so successfully. So it makes me as an Asian performer feel incredibly proud and happy and elated and totally ecstatic. So of course I'm going to support them and be all fangirly and I feel like a total teenager doing it. It's amazing. Yeah, there just needs to be a collab, Leia. <laughs> Definitely. Come on, let's there, make this happen. There doesn't have to be one. I am perfectly happy where I am. Um, <laughs> a ca not a not so casual admirer and huge, huge fan. I'm just, I'm just happy to, you know, to be able to support them and and it's it kind. I'm kind of gutted that I'm on a U.S. tour at the same time they're going to be in Vegas doing their little residency. It's like, oh man. I won't be able to get to see them perform. I won't even have that pleasure, at least not yet. But that's that's something I definitely have on my bucket list to do, to be able to get to see them live. 
that's well i'm sure that... everybody as you know in the uk that loves musical theater and loves you has got you on their bucket list to come <laughs> and see when you're on tour yeah. and it's not that long to wait so not that long to wait soon. before i let you go because i know you are a very busy lady i need your help all right okay I said my little girl likes her musical theatre and bless her. She is at the moment uh, currently practicing her audition for Matilda, the school, <gasps> high school. Oh, production. fantastic. But Leia, she's been practicing so much all week that her voice, she just oh, came no. into me before this and she was like, it's really hurting. It's really sore. What can I do? So advice what can she do tonight rest. so she can sing tomorrow just rest rest i think she's prepared enough I and mean, if she's been practicing for the whole week a night off is not going to hurt her and it may actually help her um no talking if she can help it um you know sometimes a day of rest is good also for the brain sometimes doing too much well, just, you know, and everything's going to look weird and you can't, can't overthink. Just don't overthink. Um, get some rest, get a really, really, really good night of sleep. A solid night of sleep is going to help. Um, suck on a throat lozenge, um, you know, something to help numb the pain, drink a lot of water, maybe some chamomile tea with honey to bring down if there's any inflammation uh yeah i mean doing what i do it's it's quite involved there's a lot of there's a lot of care involved in maintenance um but yeah i think she's gonna crush it tomorrow she's gonna crush I hope it so. i have my fingers crossed um just have a good time I, I love the advice you should get an early night i'm gonna say actually you know leia says you've got to go to bed early so you've got to go to bed on time and then once she's gone upstairs, I can crack open the wine. So, you know, <laughs> win. It's a win-win. Woohoo! Uh, honestly, I am so pleased that you have joined us. I am such a huge, huge fan and will oh, always you. be. You've brought so much joy to my life and tears. You've made me cry so many times. <laughs> but it, it, it's been lovely. And I can't wait for you to come to the Bridgewater Hall. It's the day before my birthday. I <gasps> will be there. I oh, know. What a nice what a birthday treat. gift. Oh, excellent. Uh, but take care and Thank we will you. see you in the UK very, very soon. Thank Absolutely. you so much. It will be great to meet you too. Bye. Thank you. What a legend Leia Salonga is and such a lovely woman. And get this, her advice really works because Daisy only went and got the part of Matilda in a high school show. <gasps> Proud mum alert. Hello. Hurrah. Yes. Oh. I am so excited that she got the role of Matilda. I think the rest paid off and also the wine that I drunk after that interview tasted really, really nice. So thanks on both the counts, Leia. And thanks for being an absolute star of a guest and thanks as well to the other guests that we had in the hive this evening the wonderful jasmine franks and we've got more guests to come next week so you know where to join me i'm here in the hive every sunday at eight o'clock but as promised tonight i said i would play you out with three wonderful ladies who are currently starring in the share show it's coming to manchester's opera house from the 17th to the 21st of May. It's going to be a cracker, so I'll leave them to sing us a song. It's a little bit of a tease from the show. Take it away, ladies. I'll see you next week.